The first day of spring has arrived, so naturally, a video with snow. The last throes of winter, or sort of, this is actually from last year when we got six inches of snow over two inches of ice. I covered that in its own video where I took out my lightly upgraded mongoose malice and totally dominated. The city shut down, cars stranded left and right, I went everywhere. We finally got snow forecast for this year, so I primed my next level mongoose fat tire bike the Dolomite ALX, which, even in its factory form, is a beast. It packs some bike shop level features out of the box, like sized frames. Comes in small, medium, and large. I have the medium, an 18 inch frame. It also improves the drivetrain over most big box fat tire bikes with a 2x up front, at the rear an 8 speed, and that's an 8 speed cassette. The derailleur, a Micro Shift 26C, which is budget, but budget that brings with it independent shifters. Big box fat tire changes out of the box with the ALX, like these, the alloy rims. So many factory good parts on the Dolomite ALX, especially for its price, what could possibly make it better? In a previous video, I added a few things, like a new air fork. This is a Balani budget air fork, but it replaced the ALX's rigid aluminum fork, and so far, I've been happy. Another previously added upgrade, the hydraulic disc brakes. Budget friendly and more bite. Today, I've added a little more to the ALX to make it even better. The factory bars, I thought decent, but 700 millimeter. My sweet spot is 720, so I've changed to these. Corky alloy bars in my preferred size. I added to them these new Rock Bros grips. I'm 50-50 with Rock Bros. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. These work great. Model Bike Grip. A great budget price under $13. Links down in the description. Upscale features though, like these snazzy compression torque end caps. I added 20 millimeters to the bars. When it came to the stem, I went with a wake stem. It's shorter by 20 millimeters. This new one's 40 millimeters with a seven degree rise. Another ad that should not only enhance comfort, but also traction, these new framed Wolf Tracks tires. Still 26 by 4.0, but with a new higher thread count, 120 TPI. Branding, even though they're frames, they're actually made by Innova. At the very least, they look ready to shred anything in their path. So shredalicious, in fact, that I dug into my ultra low supply of Maurice the Mongoose stickers. And Maurice needs a friend, so he's joined by his biggest fan, Kev Central. The orange, admittedly not a good contrast with the red accents, but I still think it's a worthy addition. Another comfort item added to my last ALX upgrade video, these ultra budget Blackburn pedals, Walmart specials available in stores. They're holding up so far. Hopefully they'll still grip in snow. And our only snow of the year just happened. We got the two to four inches forecast. The only problem, it was 60 degrees yesterday and 50 today. And unfortunately, by the time I could get bundled up and get the bike out, it had already melted on most of the grass, so there was none on the streets. Still, I'm determined and I tried my best. Sadly, there's just not enough to gauge how these tires are gonna do in the snow. They do make riding over curbs just a bit smoother though, so I noticed that right away. I believe a byproduct of the higher TPI. Lacking any real snow challenge, I opt for the next best test a wet-ish trail, where, at least in my opinion, the wolf tracks are an improvement. I know at the very least that they fling mud further, which means they're cutting through it harder. Also, a good pair with the front suspension fork. However, and this is what I've said before, mountain bike trails, not really the realm of fat tire bikes. It is fun to be able to go anywhere you want, on or off the path, except into thorns. What I'm getting at when I say that it's not in the realm is that yes, the ALX is capable of trail riding within limits, dictated mostly by rider determination. Because there's one facet of riding a fat tire bike that I feel doesn't get discussed much and often is overlooked, and that's having to climb hills on a fat tire bike, which happens a lot on trails. And along with the added mass that comes with the big wheels, there's an odd Q factor. The bottom bracket wide by necessity and that pushes the pedals out. So in a standing climb, there's a suboptimal angle to pedal to hip alignment. And again, climbing, at least on the mountain bike trails that I've ever ridden, there's a lot of it. That's not the bike's fault though, that's just part of mountain bike trail riding. This bike best pedaled while seated. Fat tire bikes are meant to be ridden on sandy beaches, in snow, in mud, and they also do amazingly well on wet concrete and asphalt streets and paths. And if you think about it, those are also areas where seated pedaling is the norm. Again, I'm not saying the ALX isn't capable of riding a trail. It is as long as they're green trails and mostly flat. And here, let me show you this. This will give you an idea of just how much mass is being rolled. 
I did my usual derailleur bounce test, where I dropped the back end to look at how much the derailleur extends and how much chain slap there is. Look at the rattle through the ground from 10 feet away. Wheels capable of creating a mini earthquake. So yeah, a lot of weight moving around, and yes, can be ridden on green trails as long as they're mostly flat, and it can ride everywhere else that a fat tire bike should be, and that's where the ALX will be king, in its modified form, an absolute boss. Maybe next winter I can give it a true run in the snow. Until then, I'm happy with the new tires that I paid $31.96 each for. Now, that was a one-time sale price, and there are probably better fat tires out there, but I doubt so for that cheap. Oh, and I forgot to show this earlier, a little wheel candy aluminum stem caps. As far as my other ads seen in this video, everything works exactly like I wanted it to. Now that's a rider perspective thing. My 20 millimeters might not be your 20 millimeters. But one thing's for sure, there is no going wrong with Maurice. And all this was cheap. I have less than $106 in all the modifications you've seen added on this video. Fat tire fun and fingers crossed for the next time it snows. Until then, if I can score a Kev Central RV, maybe I can get this to the beach and really have some fun. For now, I want to hear your opinion, so comment below. Let me know what you think about my modified ALX and about the Wolf Tracks tires. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. I appreciate any feedback. Thanks for watching Kev Central, and have a great day.